In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use WP Supercache to start caching your WordPress pages to make your site load faster and provide a better user experience for your website visitors. And we're getting started right now. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. And if you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below this video, then hit the bell notification icon so you're actually notified by YouTube when we publish more awesome tutorials for you. And with that out of the way, let's start caching some pages. Let's head over to the screencast. I'll see you there. So the first thing we have to do is install this plugin. So here we are in the WordPress dashboard. If we go over to plugins and then click on add new, and it's a very popular plugin created by the creators of, of WordPress automatic. And it quite often appears at the very beginning of the feature tab. If you don't see it there, just type in WP super cache in the search and then it will appear right here. Click on install now and then activate. We have a message up here saying it's disabled. Please go to the plugin admin page to enable caching. And we have a similar message right below the plugin down here. So we can click on this link to go to the admin page or if we go over settings, it adds a WP super cache option right there. We click on that or that link that I showed you earlier. Now to turn caching on, all you have to do is click on on click on update status and it's on. And there's there's something that Supercache looks out for, which is this big warning message right here. It basically is saying that uh, the, some of the folders on this site are searchable by external people. And what it has done is added index.html to each directory. So instead of being able to search what files and folders are inside of a folder, it loads a blank index page so people can't see anything. So just by having Supercache installed, it does that for you if it finds that problem. You can click on Dismiss if you have that. But now Supercache in its most simplest configuration is now running. That's all you have to do to get a cache up and running. And what you can do is test it by clicking on Test Cache right here. And it runs through some caching procedures here. And it says we're OK. We got OKs for all those. Bunch of green text. Green text is always a good thing. So the, the cache is working. And then if you ever want to delete the cache, there's a button right here to delete it. So that's simple enough. Um, if you never go beyond the easy installation, which is totally fine, all you'd have to do is on a regular basis, go to the contents tab over here. And by regular basis, I mean once a month or once every two weeks, depends how much traffic your website gets. But here you can see how much or how many pages are in the cache and you can regenerate cache stats if you don't think they're up to date. The problem with having too many pages in the cache, it can also create a lot of file size on your server and you wanna delete the cache periodically. And when you're working on your site, you might be doing changes to CSS or JavaScript. And I've done this often and I've pulled a lot of hair out. You go and go to the live page to see what changes you made and see how they affected your site, but nothing's happening. And you're wondering, am I going crazy? Did I do that wrong? You go back and forth 50 times before it clicks and you realize you're continually being shown cached pages. So the changes you're making actually are taking effect and they might be working, but the page you're seeing is cached. So it, it's, it can be frustrating. Whenever you work on your site or whenever I work on any site I work, I'm working on, I usually disable any caching plugins, delete the cache, disable caching plugins till after I'm done the work. You can also click on delete expired or delete cache and I mean, at that point you clear your cache, but you, still, if you work on it, you'll generate a new cache page, which will then stay, as long as you're making changes, it'll stay as that cached version that won't be updating. So if you're doing any updates to, especially to CSS background type stuff, I recommend you disable the cache while you're working on that page. So that's the simple setup. There's also an advanced tab where you can do a bunch more advanced stuff. Now, if you don't really know what's going on in here, what, what the plugin does is it selects all the recommended ones automatically. So caching is on, which we did on the easy tab. For the caching method, it's recommended to use PHP. And that's what's currently recommended here or what, that's what's selected here. If you're not sure what the mod rewrite is, just don't choose it. It's totally fine to have the, the recommended options. If you do want mod rewrite, which, which is in the HT access file, it goes a little bit faster than the PHP. And if you're really into that kind of thing and you know what you're doing, go ahead and select mod rewrite and make sure it's all set up properly and use that option. If you don't know what you're doing, just stick with the recommended. 
And for the uh, miscellaneous uh, compressed pages, the first option, compressed pages so they're served more quickly to visitors. You usually want to do that. Um, sometimes the a server has problems drawing up those compressed pages. So what you should do is select it, because it will make your site faster, and test it. Test it with a bunch of different devices, constantly clearing your cache and cookies on the browser, and just see if there are any errors when those pages are loaded. And the second option is recommended also not checked. Don't cache pages for known users. What this means is if someone is on your site and they've been cookied and they've been to your site before, or they're logged in, don't show them cache pages, which is quite often a good thing because regular visitors, they want to see updated content. If you're making any updates, there's a chance it won't be reflected if the pages are cached. So you can decide whether this is an appropriate option for you or not, but it is a recommended one, even though it's not selected. Uh, there's a, a tag that the plugin can add to pages that have not been updated. So when those pages have not been updated, then the, the browser does not, or sorry, the plugin does not go and re-update the cache with those pages because they haven't changed, which saves on server resources, which is great. This option, don't cache pages with get parameters. If you don't know what get parameters are, ignore this option. If you do know what they are, decide whether this is appropriate for you. And a get parameter is basically, like it says up here, something at the end of the URL, like here we have a question mark and a get parameter of page super cache or WP super cache and then another parameter of tab and the settings. So this is telling the website where I want to go. The website is actually pulling this information right here, this information right here, it's deciding which page I want to be on. It's quite often used to automatically fill out contact forms with people's emails and names. So if you're using get parameters, uh, decide whether you want this option checked or not. Test it, see if it breaks things. If it doesn't, it's always better to cache because if you can cache, it's faster, but you don't want it to wreck user experience. So a lot of these options, the reason you have all these options is because some of them will not work on some site configuration. So it's your job to at least pick the recommended ones because those work almost all the time on all sites and then disable and re-enable the ones that, that you're just testing out to see if it breaks things. And if it breaks things, don't turn that option on. It's pretty simple. So uh, make known users anonymous, so they serve super cached static files, just a matter of preference. Uh, it counters the earlier one where it says don't cache for known users. This one's basically saying cache for everybody, which might be the best option for your site. In advanced, enable dynamic caching requires some extra settings. It's not something you have to do by any means, but if you do want to poke around in the PHP and adjust things and, and make your site blazing fast, I encourage you to check out this option. There's an FAQ here to explain how it works. Mobile device support. This is important because everything's going mobile. Uh, if your theme by default supports mobile, it's responsive, then the pages that are cached will be responsive as well. But there are some issues with that mobile device support plus caching. So this FAQ will explain that further. The plugin deals with a lot of it, uh, but the, you might appear or you might find some issues with certain mobile devices. And this option updates the HD access file. It requires a rewrite rules update, which is done automatically when you save, but it's gonna affect the HD access file when you do save. So if you do have errors in punctuation, odd characters as an option, you want to select test that out to see if that fixes it. So this option here, clear all cache files when a post or page is published or updated, does what it says, it clears the entire cache. It would be better if when a post or page was updated, it would clear the cache of that post or page, the cached version of it, and not everything, but that's not how that one works. So if you're publishing pages or a lot, this means your cache will be cleared a lot. So choose that one or not, depends on your preference. Try it out, if, you, if it doesn't work for you, turn it off. Extra homepage checks, meaning that the homepage is checked more often for changes. And quite often people have their homepages set up so they have dynamic data pulled in. For example, when a new blog post is published, the homepage may be updated. So. I recommend using this, and the plugin does as well, just so that your home page is as up to date as possible. And this option, only refresh the current page when comments are made. That's a great option because it'll allow you not to clear cache as often. Because whenever a comment's made, that page is refreshed in the cache, which means you don't have to delete your whole cache to refresh it. 
they're, they're constantly being refreshed because of all the comments that are coming in. If you don't have a lot of comments, this option doesn't really do a lot for you. So you probably don't need that one just yet. But when you do have lots of comments, it's definitely an option to try out. Here you can generate a list of the newest cache pages on this page. It's not really adding to the functionality of the plugin. It really just shows you which cache pages have been cached on this page. More of an interest based thing. Course file locking. Uh, this may slow down your site, so it's actually not very smart. Um, so I would leave that off. Late initialization. This is important if you're in legacy mode, which if you don't know what legacy mode is, then you're not in legacy mode. So I'll just leave that one unchecked. You can change the location of the cache. By default, it's in this WP content folder, which is the same folder as your plugins and themes under the cache folder there. You can change the path if you want to. I don't see why you would. The path just seems completely fine to me. And then this, all this text is basically explaining how you can change the directory. Uh, down here, expiry time and garbage collection. That is what it sounds like. Your cache pages can be set to expire, so they'll be automatically deleted and the garbage will be collected, meaning they'll be thrown away. So the cache timeout currently is 100 or 1800 seconds. That's the default. You can set that to whatever time you want. You can also set it to zero to disable garbage collection. And what's interesting is they set it default to 1800, then they say a good starting point is 3600. So choose the time frame that you want, uh, but definitely a couple hours at least for your time frame is great, just because that is enough time for that cache to actually be used. If things are garbage collected too quickly, then your cache pages are never really shown to people because they're always constantly being updated. Kind of defeats the purpose of having a caching plugin. Uh, you can be notified by email when the garbage collection runs, which is pretty cool. There's a bunch of information about garbage collection. And then you can change the expiration if you made updates there. You can choose specific pages and types of pages to not be cached. So maybe you never want the front page to be cached. We had that option earlier where it checks the home page more often to make sure there's no updates that need to be cached. Or here, you can just turn off caching for that page completely, which is maybe an even better option if your home page updates a lot. Just never cache the home page. And down below, you're able to add some uh, regular expression information to specify specific pages to never cache. In the example they give, if you have blo older blog posts, you can say a certain year, if you have the year in the URL, you can say don't cache anything with that year in the URL. Where you don't want to cache anything from the month of March. So as long as you have the month in the URL, you can set that in here just by going forward slash 03 forward slash. This is how WordPress would put the, the month in there. Maybe you have it set, your permalink set so it says March. Who knows, you might have a difference. So the point is whatever you put in here, if, the, if, if a component of the URL matches what you've put in here, that page will not be cached and these settings in here overwrite whatever you choose here. And if you don't know what this is, don't worry about it. Just, just leave the default that they have. Choose these options if you want. They're pretty self-explanatory. And just hit save when you saved them. If you update this area, click save for the strings. Here you can have other pages, specific, or sorry, for specific files that are not cached. Make changes here, click on save files. So this section here allows you to set rejected user agents. And what that means is whenever this or a user agent you specify in here comes to your site, it has to view the page. And Supercache can actually cache at that time when that page is viewed by a bot or a user agent, but you can tell it not to. So if any of these user agents visit any page, that page will not be cached due to their visit but it'll be cached when a regular visitor or a different user agent visits, but not when these ones do. So if you make changes to this, click save here. If you don't know what user agents are, don't worry about it. Just keep what they have as a default, and that's that. Then there's the lockdown option. This is used when you're expecting a large spike in traffic. Like, say you know your article is going to be published on Huffington Post today, you know it's going to get a lot of traffic to your site. Use this option and you can make it so that Supercache does not refresh the cache when comments are left 
on a blog post and they'll actually receive a message saying that your comment will be updated shortly or the, the page will be updated shortly, not right now. Uh, whereas the normal functionality, if you check that box up above, is whenever comments left the page or the cached version is refreshed. That can take up server resources. So if you have a lot of traffic and there's a lot of refreshing of the cache, it can really slow down your site. So if you know there's a spike traffic coming, enable lockdown. And here you can specify a specific page to be cached. And like it says here, this is only when you're expecting a major dig or slash dot level of traffic. Dig and slash dot are types of social networks. Basically what it's saying is if you know you're gonna get a huge, huge amount of traffic and it's gonna to, to, to go to a particular page, you can add that page here and that's gonna directly cache that page and then that will help with the load time and it won't slow down your site too much by having that huge amount of traffic. And that's the end of the advanced settings. But what we have as well up at the top is the CDN. So if we hop over to there, this is where we can enable and enter the settings for a CDN. A CDN is a content delivery network which allows you to speed up the media files that are served on your site. For example, images, audio, if you have video on your site, uh, JavaScript, CSS files, these kind of things can all be loaded from somewhere else, which often allows loading to be a lot faster. So if you have a CDN, check this box, fill in these settings. If you don't have one and you don't want one, just don't use that right now. CDNs do speed up your site, but it's not the most critical thing in the world. So that's all the major settings in the WP SuperCache plugin. That's all you really have to do. Actually, that's more than you have to do to get it running. All you really have to do is on the Easy tab, just click on Enable, or caching on, click on update status and your cache is ready to go. Or your plugin's ready to start caching your site. And you can set the other settings if you want to, but you don't have to. And caching is just one part of speeding up your site. There's more to it. There's the CDN, for example. There's using object caching. There's compressing your images. There's loading videos from off your site. Maybe you don't use a CDN, but maybe you have them hosted on Vimeo or YouTube. There's uh, toning down your the number of HTTP requests that your page has. There's a lot of things that go into speeding up your site. Caching is definitely a good one and a good place to start. So that's how easy it is to use WP Super Cache to start caching your pages. You can do the simple setup where all you have to do is activate the plugin and it runs out of the box. You can do some of the advanced settings. It's up to you. If something breaks, just know that you can undo what you did and then save it and then everything's back to normal. And caching plugins do have a habit of sometimes breaking things. Not all of the options in a caching plugin will work for every website. So you have to be kind of careful with that. But all in all, I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon so you're notified when I publish more awesome content for you. Hit that card up in the top right corner of the video for some awesome free WordPress resources. And until next time, keep crushing it with WordPress. I'll see you in the next video.